Okay, time for me to sit back and enjoy my new liquid cooler and wait, what is this outrage? I ordered a closed loop cooler. I did not ask for any innovation or good ideas. What is this pump doing on the hoses and not on the block or the radiator? I'm going to have to talk to management. Hey guys, Hardware Hound here. I am back. Welcome back. Or, you know, if you're new, then, well, welcome. But I am here ready to work on some reviews. And this time I have a closed loop cooler look at. And guys, one of my favorite things is cooling. I, I really enjoy it. It's probably like just right barely behind motherboards for some weird reason. But I have a product from Rygen Tech today. And Rygen Tech has been just this really interesting company. I, I don't know what it is about them, but they've just got some really cool designs. And sometimes it's like, oh man, there's just this one little thing or something that I totally wish that they could have just cleaned that one area up. But, but man, they're just such a great and interesting company. So we need to see how they're gonna do with this closed loop, loop cooler. We have the Orcus 240. And as you're gonna notice, there is a huge change going on with this closed loop cooler. Rygen Tech put the pump on the hoses. I mean, <laughs> what is this? Like, is a company trying to come up with an innovative idea? <laughs> what? Who even does that anymore? But this is really interesting. Unfortunately, this innovative idea could totally get lost if there's other parts of this cooler that aren't up to snuff. Let's go ahead, look at this install process, test this cooler out, see how the lighting looks, and then we can wrap this review up, give it an award. All right, so we're gonna go ahead and highlight some of these steps of the install procedure. Of course, we're gonna be using the Ryzen 1800X on an AM4 socket, um, Oris Gaming 5 motherboard. So the first thing that Ryzen Tech gives you is they give you a rear bracket that's kind of open in the back like that. And I don't know, it's, yeah, I kind of like it when I see the brackets have more of that center support. But you're gonna just put your four screws in. Of course, for Ryzen, we're gonna have them in those, those slots there. They're pretty short screws, so that's something that's kind of a little bit different. Okay, so the following step, you're gonna have these four little nuts that you screw onto those screws. It's important to realize that there's kind of an indented side in there, and that faces upwards. So that way, that means the flat side here is gonna be the side that goes to your motherboard. Oh, and don't forget, they also include these little tiny plastic washers to put there, put on there too. So don't forget to throw those on first before you screw the nuts down. So once you got those four nuts secured, you're gonna have this top bracket that's gonna go on there. And there's just four holes there. And you're gonna have a few of these little screws that just screws it right in. So pretty easy step. We'll go ahead and get this bracket on and move on. Once I get this bracket screwed in, I just did one other little quick step. First off, you know, double check, making sure nothing's making contact. So we got plenty of clearance on the VRMs and stuff. So we have just enough clearance for that four, uh, fourth ramp slot too, in case you're using all. But I went ahead and went back. After these things secure all the way down, so then I went to the other side and used a screwdriver to cinch down the back plate a little bit better. It's a little bit loose um, with just hand tightening, so it seems to help to go ahead and just use a screwdriver. It kind of compresses that foam and makes sure that you don't start getting some slack from the CPU cooler pulling the bracket forward. So just, you know, quick little step, pretty easy to do. We'll go ahead now and start trying to get this radiator unit in. All right, so before we start messing with the pump block, I always like to get the radiator in there. Of course, we have the Rygen Tech S steering case, so it looks like we're gonna have plenty of room, but I wanna point a couple of things out as we're doing this install. So first off, of course, you have these kind of nice long, um, let me see if I can get this thing to, come on, wake up. Hold on, it's not gonna like me, so we'll just go like here. So yeah, we've got these nice long fan screws to screw into the radiator. Um, the radiator has a pretty narrow, uh, looks like a pretty ima good amount of fins per inch, so that might help a little bit. We've got 
a fill port or drain port here right on the radiator and there's also one that is built into the pump here so i'm going to pull this baby out real quick and just bring it around yeah look at that we've got another fill or or, or drain port right there on the pump so that's not something you see on all in one like you'd expect this to be a closed loop cooler it's not closed I mean, you can't add more things, but it is refillable, so that's kind of nice. So we'll go ahead now and get this radiator the rest of the way installed. All right, so we got a radiator up in here. Um, the fans have some nice anti-vibration pads on here, so I don't think we're going to have to worry about noise issues. Um, Ryzen Tech is opting for just a very basic level of control. So as you can see here, we've just got straight four pin PWM headers and same thing here. We've got just like a kind of a straightforward three pin header for the pump here. Um, one thing I will say, I wish the Orcus had included maybe just one fan splitter for these two, just to make it a little easier in case your motherboard doesn't. But a lot of motherboards are coming with a CPU fan and CPU optional as well as some kind of pump or water cooling header. So we're not gonna have problems with this motherboard, at least for now. Now for controlling the RGB, we're going to be using this guy. So this guy has eight channels of RGB level control. And if you want, you can also control it by running a cord straight to your motherboard and syncing it with the motherboard lighting. So we'll probably mess around more with the remote on this review, but just so you know, that is capability. So that's a lot, I mean, eight light channels built in with a nice little Molex connector. You know, I hate Molex connectors, but I saw a really good point. This thing can handle more amps than the, little, than the SATA 12 volt connectors can, which is, means it can handle more power. So you might still see some devices using a Molex just to handle more power. Let's go ahead, get all these cables connected, and start seeing how the pump block's gonna work out. And there we go. Pretty straightforward and easy. We got it all hooked up. So Ryzen Tech does include just a little tiny packet of thermal paste. Not much to write home about there though. And they do have a little spreader, which, you know, probably won't be as useful if you use the dot methods like I do. But I choose to use my GC Extreme because I really like this thermal paste. It's been one of my favorite ones and it performs excellently. I'm usually not a big fan of just two screw installs, but this thing just is, feels really secure and doesn't feel like it's rocking back and forth or being uneven. So that's, that's pretty impressive. Um, this pump is just super easy to install and it looks like it will crowd your fourth RAM slot just a tad, but depending on the motherboard, you might have just enough room to get one in there. Um, connection wise though, as long as you have enough pins for the pump, everything there is pretty easy. But this is just an RGB cable coming off of here. We only have one cable coming because the pump is right here. And I love the fact that my pump cable is coming off the front there. It's really easy for cable management. Overall, I really like this install process and I'm thinking Ryzen Tech is doing an excellent job here. So I think we need to get this thing fired up and really see what it looks like. All right, we have the CPU cooler installed and we have all of its RGB glory. And yeah, looks really sharp here. So um, right now I've got it synced with the motherboard and that's working out really well. As you can see, the motherboard's phasing all the different lights and as that's going, we see lights matching up, syncing up. So that's probably going to be the best way if you have a lighted motherboard like the Aorus here. It's probably going to be the best way to run this cooler. Look at this flow meter. That is so fantastic. I love it. This is a brilliant idea. Putting the pump on the hoses. The pump is just completely out of the way. It's not interfering with the with the hot plate or the cold plate or the plate that has the fins that does the heat transfer from the CPU. It's not messing with the radiator. And if I want to do dual fans on each side, push pull, then we got it. So I'm going to reach around back here now and hopefully I can do this pretty easily and find this switch, but bam, 
All right, so Ryzen Tech also includes this little remote here and you can control the colors. So the mode here, if you press it, um, oops, yeah, if you press it up and, and you can start going through manual color cycles. So these are like static colors and then we'll start getting into like the flashing modes and we can just kind of run through those just like so. As you can see, there's a lot of options here. Now we've got a little bit of some color cycle modes, which are pretty nice looking. And, you know, back to static colors. If you press the auto button, it takes you back to this color cycle mode and it's like the last mode. So if, you are, if you're getting confused where your modes are, you can just press auto, it'll go back to like the last mode. And then if you press plus, you're gonna be back to the beginning, minus you're going backwards. So yeah, there's a decent amount of built-in options. Um, one of the other cool things, I'm gonna go back to auto, is you can also speed up and slow down these specs pretty easily. And it'll just go really, really slow. It's usually helpful to hold the speed button down to start getting it up to the speed that you want it to go to. So now remember guys, I'm having a little bit of some trickiness going on here because this is an RF signal. Ideally, you're gonna need line of sight with the sensor there to the, bot, the, the control box that I showed you earlier. Now I want to also point out one more really awesome thing just so we see it for sure. Look at that, Rygen included with this Orcus an extra bottle of fluid. So you can, if you have some air bubbles going on or you think, huh, you know, I wanna make sure this thing's really filled to the max. Well, you can do that. That's pretty awesome. Now, I'm gonna go ahead and switch this thing back to my motherboard sink though, because with the current lighting setup I've got, the motherboard sink's gonna make a lot more sense for the rest of this visual. I do want to point out one major complaint I have, and I kind of want Raijin Tech to maybe either give me this option or, or maybe change the product a little bit. So I'm gonna bring this box in here. See that there? See how we've got this little pump guy here and we've got the fans? This looks like we've got some kind of Spectrum Wave individual LED control, and we don't on this unit. So A, Raijin Tech, give us some individual RGB control so I can do like rainbow circling Spectrum Wave type effects, or maybe just like actually do like pie lines so it looks very obvious that we're saying hey it's this color this color this color this blend makes us think hey we've got this rainbow effect we can do and unfortunately that is not the case with the orcas i was a little disappointed in that but i'm not too disappointed because now let's go ahead and go right into performance <clears throat> Now, I'm not really sure if there's actually more fins per inch on this rad than other closed loop coolers, but I will say, Raijin Tech's performance was fantastic. As you can see on this chart that I've got, we've got our blue line is our core temps, and then and when we were running a 1800X on stock speeds because it's running pretty good temperatures as it is, so I didn't really need to try to overclock it and we've got eight cores that we're trying to cool. So the blue line is my core temps, the purple line on the graph is my sound levels, and you can see that Raijin Tech is doing phenomenal. I, they almost matched an NZXT Kraken on performance, and I'm like, how? I mean, it's only a 240 millimeter radiator, but the noise levels were right on par. Normally when you switch to 120 millimeter fans, you're gonna get way more noise. And the fact that they can maintain a noise level that's comparable to, two, to 140 millimeter fans is really impressive. I love this about this. And I've done this review game long enough to know that just because they may not show a number that they're the highest cooling 240 millimeter cooler out there, I do know that some coolers, the way they do that, is they just put jet level noise fans on the rad and it's like, well, okay, you got more cooling out of it. That's nice, but it's not worth the noise. Even at max, it's not too bad. And you can pretty much just use with the PWM control of your motherboard, a hundred, like a normal curve, which will be a little bit aggressive on temperatures, but honestly, a normal curve isn't gonna be uncomfortable on the noise levels. 
Raijin Tech, you guys did a fantastic job on the Orcus. I love this. This is paying off. The only concern I have is, is it going to handle the back pressure or is it going to burn itself out? Cooler Master had a problem with one of their units. I'm, the only time will tell, but right now, I love it and I love the fact that we've got this flow meter here and there's no pump in here. It's beautiful. Let's go ahead, conclude this review and give this cooler an award. So guys, I really think that the Orcus 240 is Raijin Tech's best product yet. And that's really saying a lot because they've had some really great products. Raijin Tech, you guys are just, you're, you're great. You're a great company. Now, we still gotta take, take the matter of price though and availability. And the good news is, is this cooler is available on Newegg. The other kind of good news is it's $115. Now, you might be looking at a slightly higher price for liquid cooling, but I don't have to name the names, guys. You know some other RGB liquid coolers out there that are through the roof on price. I mean, pushing $200. And when you're, when you're doing closed loop cooling and you're starting to spend $200, you're, it's like, maybe you should be going to the custom loop by that point. I mean, it's kind of iffy. So $115 is really a good, fair price. I, I'm not going to call it like this amazing steal, but that's, a, I think, a pretty good deal. Now, award-wise, there's a part of me that really wants to just call this a top choice because, I mean, a must-have. You, you just got to have it. But there's unfortunately not quite enough going on with the Orcus to totally make it the only choice you can have. But at $115, we have great performance, great noise levels for what, you know, closed loop coolers, excellent aesthetics, and the only minor problem that I, that I mentioned is the fact that we don't have any kind of addressable RGB lighting so that we can get more of a spectrum wave thing. That's pretty minor considering not everybody likes, few people like a wave of colors flashing at their face. I do. I'll admit, I'm a little strange sometimes, but in the best way possible. Anyway, editor's choice. The Raijin Tech Orcus 240 does get a pure overclock editor's choice, so it's a great cooler. I definitely put it up there as one of the top ones to look at, and I highly recommend it. Raijin Tech, you guys are doing, you're doing an awesome job. Keep it up. I love what you're, you're putting out there in the market. Excellent, excellent job. For those of you watching this video, hey, if you like what I'm doing, share out my videos if you're wanting to help me out want me to keep going shares definitely help and then you know you can like and subscribe but if you want to obviously it's entirely up to if i have measured up to your high standards of quality youtube programming i'll catch you later